We will now open the Tuesday, August the 3rd, 2021 uh, meeting of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners for the pre-agenda 5 o'clock meeting. And I would uh, ask uh, Manager Mull to please review any adjustments to the agenda. We do have a few adjustments and uh, some clarifications you have before you in an amended agenda. And on that agenda was just some renumbering for the administrative matters. And then we need to move the Board of Elections salary discussion from new business to administrative, ad uh, administrative matters, and that'll be item 8.9. And then the final item is to remove economic development from closed session. And those adjustments have been made on your amended agenda that you have before you. Alrighty. Thank you. Beth, uh, we have no uh, presentations or appointments this evening. We do have three public hearings. Um, I request uh, to uh, consider a request by Sandra Johnson and our former commissioner, <coughs> well, it's Gary Bowles, uh, relative, I guess, to release uh, zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville. Um, any preview that we need to do? I don't think so. And there's also two public hearings to consider economic development incentives, one for project return, the other for project keel. Um, and let me ask if uh, prior to hearing those is Gene, uh, uh, are you able to take 7-1 if that looks like we're good to go? Making the motion? Yes. For Sandra Johnson? Yeah. Yes. And uh, project return. Um, sure. Mr. Chairman. Peter. And project Keel. Uh, Scotty. <clears throat> so we'll roll into uh, the administrative matters are appropriate for our consent agenda and I would ask uh, Ms. Beth to please uh, tee those up for us. Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman Mallory. The first item is a request from Planning and Development to consider calling for a public hearing on August the 17th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. in regard to a request by Howard Bryan to release zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Troutman. And Mr. Todd is here if you have any questions regarding this request. Any questions? I think this is pretty straightforward. Yeah. Oh. So that's consent? Yep. And so okay. the bullet on it. Is consent? Consent. Consent. Mr. Todd, you got off. Easy on this one. <laughs> That's the 7 o'clock. The speech is at the 7 o'clock one. Okay. Um, the next item is a request from the city uh, or from Statesville Regional Airport Manager for approval to expend $2,645 as a local match for a $47,610 grant from the North Carolina Department of Transportation to be used for an emergency generator for run runway lighting at the airport. And John Ferguson was coming to make this presentation. He also has a PowerPoint presentation that he wants to give to the board um, that he gave to the city last night. So he may be thinking he needs to do this at the seven o'clock since he's doing the presentation. All right. Well, we don't want to steal his thunder, so move we'll to seven. just move this to seven. Okay. The next item is a request from the library for approval of budget amendment number five in the amount of $10,990 and to accept State Library of North Carolina SLNC ADAPTS Easy Grant. And Julie Moore is here to make this. Oh, Deb Cheek is here to make this request. We've renumbered the agenda. Um, I'm sorry, we have, an, we have an amended agenda. So we've renumbered it. You're number six. <laughs> okay. So we are here to request to um, accept the grant from the State Library of North Carolina, 
It's in the amount of $10,990 to provide computer classes for seniors and for workforce development and also to amend the budget. Good. Any questions or comments? Have we done this before? We requested approval to apply <laughs> for the grant in June. And, um, no, I mean, have we uh, oh, done computer yes. classes before? Right, right. The last time we did computer classes, it was with the grant in conjunction with Mitchell Community College, and a professor from Mitchell came in and taught classes, but um, we have not had any classes at the Statesville Library okay. since then, and that's probably going on eight or ten years ago that we did okay. that. Well, any uh, questions or comments for Julie? Consent? Sure. And Ms. Moore also has the Thank next you. item, which is a request from the library mm -hmm. for approval to apply for emergency connectivity funding in the amount of $2,970. Funds have been made available th through the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, and we're able to apply just as we do for E-rate funding for our internet services um, to be reimbursed for our hotspots. The difference between this program and E-rate is E-rate, we only get re reimbursed 60%, but this program is 100% re reimbursable. We currently have 22 hotspots, so when I apply for this funding, it would cover the cost of those hotspots for FY22, and it would be approximately $2,970. It would We're be on a reimbursable... Located. It would be a reimbursable grant where, just like with E-rate, I send in the invoices and then they send the funds to us. Where are those hotspots located? They're at the Statesville Library. Um, any location, patrons can request them and we can send them to the branch, but we found that due to issues with connectivity, the ones when people try to use them up in the northern end of the county in certain areas that already lack access, they don't work as well. So the majority of them are being used in Statesville and Troutman. And currently, we have a hold list on them that as soon as they're returned, people already have them on request. So they've, be they've become very popular. Okay. Any uh, additional questions or comments? Consent? Consent. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a request from the Finance Department for approval um, to use American Rescue Plan Act funding for identified equipment and projects and approval of special revenue. I'm sorry, Ms. Yep. Cheek, I've got you out of order again, but we'll go ahead and do you. Mr. Furches will let you wait for a minute. <laughs> An approval of special revenue fund ordinance amending, uh, amendment. So Ms. Cheek is here, and you have an amended list um, of these items that we have gone through and prepared that are subject to this grant funding to be used, and Ms. Cheek's gonna walk you through this list. Okay, um, as you know, we've talked a lot about what is allowable, not allowable under these ARPA funds, and we know that water, sewer, and stormwater projects are allowable. So we met with David Salibi to talk with him about all the projects that we have and what if we could pull out stormwater, if we could pull, pull out water, sewer. And so he's given us a list of projects that, that he has items that would be eligible for ARPA. We do not have cost estimates at this time. So I, I guess what we're trying to do at this point is find out if you're okay with the projects that are listed on this list. And as we get the funding dollars, we will come back to you and do a project ordinance. Um, I can can go through the list if you would like for me to, would you? I think probably if you can just explain the concept behind the United Way piece. Okay. United Way, as you know, partnered with us in the um, CARES funding, which was rental assistance, um, child care assistance, anything to help our citizens get back to work. And they are asking to do that same thing, to be able to use these funds over the next several years to give assistance to the citizens, to get them back into a working environment, to help get their rent caught up, to, to do the daily necessity things that they need. You'll also notice that DSS has a, a request on there, and they would like to do the same type thing with some of their low-income families that come to them. So that's, that is one of the items that's, 
that's very well received on ARPA and very well um, promoted as to help our our citizens that are struggling to get back on their feet and to, mm -hmm. to get their rent, their mortgage, their utilities, all of these items caught up. Um, and I'll also add to that as far as United Way, my conversations with Brett Eckerman, one of the problems that we're having is childcare in Iredell County. Uh, even though childcare centers have opened, they cannot hire staff to work at those childcare centers. So it's kind of the chicken and the egg issue. I mean, to get our citizens back to work, a lot of them need childcare, but if the childcare centers cannot get fully staffed, then they cannot have, you know, they may have capacity for 50 children, but they may not have the staffing for 50 children and only can accept 25. So we really have to address that as well. So one of the things that we had talked about doing is working with those child care centers through United Way to try to get their staffing up to where it was prior to COVID, COVID hitting. So these individuals have options for child care so they can go back to work because that's really the biggest piece of the puzzle is trying to get our citizens back to work. Um, and in order to do that, we have to have appropriate child care and these child care centers <clears throat> need to have staffing. So those are, all of those things, United Way is committed to work with us and work through programs. So this is really kind of a, an allotment that we'll be setting aside. But as we come up and work with United Way to create those specific programs, we will allocate specific funds for that specific program. So we will certainly come back to you and say, okay, we've worked with United Way. We've come up with this program that they're going to spearhead and they're going to facilitate on our behalf with these funding and we anticipate X amount of dollars going towards this program. So when you see this number, it's not just a lump sum going and say, you know, spend any way you want. It's just kind of a set aside based on some of those higher priority issues <clears throat> that, that we've set down, that we've, we've heard from the board regarding some issues that, that the board is interested in in getting our citizens back to work a piece of that is making sure there's appropriate childcare. So a lot of those things are here in this. So please don't think that this is just a check that we're gonna write with no, no accountability. We're gonna continue to work through some of those programs. They can also, I will say that uh, nonprofits have a little bit more leniency on how they can spend these funds than we do. So uh, they, they have a little bit more flexibility mm -hmm. than we would. So they have agreed to be a partner with us and, and help us serve the community and make sure that these funds have direct impact back into our community. Questions? Okay, good. <laughs> so I don't have to ask them. Yeah. So the, the approach that we're going to take with these funds is, is you'll probably see me most every meeting coming, uh, updating the list, uh, removing anything from the list that you might want removed, and also amending our project ordinance. So tonight, the only items that we're asking to amend the project ordinance for is first the um, air purification at the library, which the board approved on June 1st. And then additional AED units for the sheriff and for DSS. So that is all that we're asking for appropriation for at this point. The rest of these items are um, suggestions that, that you're free to give feedback to us on whether you want it to remain on the list. And I will note that one of the items on the list that the board has expressed interest on is um, the one-time bonuses for staff that worked during COVID-19, and that is an allowable expenditure, so we need some guidance from the board regarding how, how you would like to allocate those funds, but I do want to point out that we understand that that is a desire of the board and that is an allowable expenditure, so uh, we can work getting some additional guidance on that as well. Now, with the, uh, the $4.5 million to the United Way, is, is once we allot that to them, does that give them more time? I mean, we, we can get it, and then does that give them more time? Because no, we got three years? Um, it has to really for, it's 2026 that the final payments have to occur, 2026. Yeah, but that final payment would be to us, right, to give to them? No, we have to have the funds expended okay. by 2026. So I'm uh, looking for Ms. Cheek to come. Yes. They accounting? still have to have so it expended. They have to expend Yes, because there still is an accounting. Okay. for it. So even though we're 
We're partnering with United Way to help us um, with our reach into the community. We still have to account for how that money is being spent and report it, and it still has to be expended by 2026. I was just hoping we could yeah. use it out a little bit more. With we, we looked at... I, I think that that was something that we looked at to see, but I, I think the expenditure of it has to be by the end, December 31st of 2026, That's the funds correct. have to be expended. Okay. And the way we worked with United Way in the past, they've made the expenditures and we have reimbursed them. Right. Mm -hmm. Have we identified any other projects that we can use this for so far? That's not on this list? Um, these are the ones that are on the list, but we are continuing to vet. We've got another list that we're continuing to vet to see if there is an, an option. One of the things that I will say had to come off the list was this drainage work here because we had already bid it out and we did not have the required language in the bid documents. Okay. And that's a requirement. So that is one that came off the list. Uh, we are going to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's because there will be very specific audits on these funds and we're going to we're going to make sure that we spend them correctly so we don't have to repay them but um so there are several more we'll, we're still looking at to see if if it will qualify for these funds but these are the ones we feel comfortable with already that are allowable that we wanted to go ahead and get before you and and kind of get a nod to start moving forward and putting numbers on it we certainly don't want to go through you know, getting hard and fast numbers if the board's not comfortable moving forward with that. Are you looking at, um, can you get us some options and ideas as far as if we decided that we wanted to move forward with the one-time bonus? Is that? Yes. Whether that would be, what what just deliverable method that would be suggested? We can we can give you some ideas and options and we can tell you what what that would equate to as far as financial dollars and we can we can do that and you can vote on that the same way we would do this once we do that we'll give you a couple of different options you can tell us which one you want to move forward with and then Ms. Cheek will come back and ask for that actual expenditure okay, okay. so uh, an acceptance of this uh, on our consent agenda today will just ratify in terms of actual approved expenditures, the library air purification, sheriff's AED, and the DSS AED units, as well as just a set aside of the four and a half, just in terms of conceptually, for the United Way. Yes, the appropriation will only be for the library and the AEDs at this point. Yes, we're only asking for the board to give approval to actually expand the top three numbers and then and then looking for a nod of the other items on the list to be fleshed out later and come back to you with exact numbers okay are there any other questions comments consent going through all the uh, the reams of uh, guidance to try to figure out what's uh, allowable and what's not allowable because it's not intuitive correct <laughs> and it's still not final either okay. so <laughs> but thank you um and i will say while miss cheek is still here she has become our resident expert regarding this she has attended all of the the meetings and the webinars and so she she constantly is getting emails from me or calls or dropping in her office what about this what about this? So um, thank you for your patience with me as we continue. I throw every option in the world at her, and then she goes through and, and vets it. So I appreciate her doing that. Okay, Mr. Furches, I have put you off, so now it's your turn. Uh, the next item is a request from Tax Administration to present the annual tax settlement and approval of orders for collections to Bill Furches. My wife told me at lunch that I had the same tie and coat on that I had the last time I went to front of the commissioners. I said, good, maybe they'll remember me. <laughs> but before I get to my settlement, I got a few things I wanted to mention to you. Bill, you're I'm unforgettable. Wanna... Sir? You're unforgettable. <laughs> I hope all of you got your uh, tax cards, tax charts. Uh, I think you'll find them useful. Um, Please note on there that the Ireland County tax rate is 
is the lowest in the region, and we're 25% uh, below anybody in this region and in the state of North Carolina, on the average, that is. So that's, you know, ex excellent position to be in. I want to mention a few things to you. Um, the 2021 tax bills will be dated Friday, August the 6th, and be mailed on that date. We're mailing 109,382 out, and we are not, we are, later we're going to uh, mail out 6,500 personal property bills, which we're going to mail them as discovery bills. We've been mailing with regular bills. These are unlisted taxes, and what we're trying to do is make sure we have a valid tax levy for the county. Uh, we're also doing one thing a little different this year that we've never done before. We're going to bill the new owners that have purchased property uh, between January the 2nd and July the 9th that have been recorded, straight transfers. We're billing that, those people directly rather than sending them new owner letters. It'll save us about 5,000 uh, bill additional billings we have to send out. Um, also, I just want to tell you, I'm working on a project to reshape the tax department for the 22-23 budget. The county is growing tremendously, and uh, we, uh, we're trying to keep up, but I got about one-third of my staff that can retire in the next three to five years, and we've got to be prepared. The uh, 23 reappraisal will be the largest valuation gain since 2007. Right now, I don't know how big it's going to be. It's going to be huge. We expect uh, high volumes of appeals, and we need to be repaired, and I will need your help. Now, I'm here tonight to uh, present the annual settlement uh, as required by 105-373 and ask you to accept uh, this settlement and issue orders to tax collector and the sheriff to collect taxes for the coming year. I think you all have... You probably don't have all these notes I've written on my note, but uh, this year we had a fairly decent year. <clears throat> Turns out our tax levy was $146,747,000. Included in that tax levy, and you might find this interesting, is $12.8 million in motor vehicle taxes, which is $2 million more than last year. And what we've had, this is a strange thing, it's probably the first time it's happened since World War II, that used vehicles are appreciating and value. Unbelievable. Uh, we collected $145,888,000, and we have outstanding $859,000. This is a reduction of $244,000 from last year, and it's, the uh, it's been a goal of mine to get below a million dollars, and this is actually the first time I got below $1.1 million, so we're really happy with this number. Our collection rate for the year was 99.41%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it was 99.20 last year. We excluded motor vehicles, 99.36. It was 99.13 last year. Um, our delinquent tax collections was 1,323,000, which is 100,000 more than last year. Our delinquent collections outstanding, that's for fiscal years 12 through 20, uh, is $1,927,000. That represents 0.19% of the original levy of $1,018,000,000. We're down, uh, in the past two years, we've brought this down to $820,000. Uh, we also collected uh, 21 taxes of, uh, in advance, 313000 Additionally, what you do not see on this chart is we have our collection fees, gross receipts, uh, penalties and interest, beer and wine equaled 2,297,000, which is 300,000 more than last year. And our total for all collections, uh, for the county that is, was $149,822,000. Not bad for 1.5% of the budget for us. Now I'll get to the numbers if you get to the next page, sir, or gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. This year we collected $9,485,000 more in our county taxes than the previous year. We up, eight, up 7%. Collected $4 million more than was budgeted, 102.8% of the original. But that's probably because the, the budget people didn't believe me last year and how great we are. But I, I don't hold it against them. I, 
Our 17 year cumulative total of 29.9 million over budgeted revenues, 17 year cumulative delinquent taxes of 29.3 million, and for all jurisdictions, we collected 230,783,000. That's 14 million more than last year, and 50 more than four years ago. Some of our collection actions, uh, I will tell you, this, most of these items went down in the number that we uh, produced this year because we were short on personnel due to COVID. At one time, had, oh, I don't know, over one third of our staff out with COVID in the entire department. And others that were out just exposed to COVID. Uh, we got a lot of help from the Sheriff's Department. Uh, we did 40 more warrants this year than we did before. They've done a great job for us. Um, Garnishments are way down, about 275 below what we normally have. There again, it was a personnel issue. Didn't have the people to do it. Uh, credit agency, I'm trying to find somebody to do act as our credit agency. We used to have a really good one, and they stopped doing what they do for us, and uh, really helps us for people that move out of move out of state, owe us taxes. We give us this opportunity to catch up with them. We also did, uh, we, bank attachments, we did 220 less than we did last year. Just didn't have the personnel to do it. Um, okay, problems is you, bankruptcies are way down, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of that's because of uh, the courts and what have you, but the foreclosure also filed with the clerk courts officers are down, way down. I'm sure that's because there's been a moratorium on foreclosures and there was, uh, courts were closed. A couple of other problems I have is the gap billing. Again, this is something the state of North Carolina laid on us that uh, we, we, only, we collected 62% out of 211,000 in, and this was 6,500 bills. And uh, if we had, if the state would collect it as they should, we would have had a collection rate of 99.47%. We also have a problem with the uh, IRP tags, that's the International Registration Plan for Truckers where they can buy a tag without paying the taxes, and then we've got to try and find them. Uh, whether, and sometimes they do not list, so it's a difficult task for us. Uh, if you'll turn to our last page, now this is my bragging page. Have I been bragging already? I'm just checking. Uh, if you look at the column on the left, that's the fiscal year at the end of uh, each June 20th that year. The original collection rate is in the middle, and what the collection rate on the right-hand column is what the collection rate is at 63021. You'll see, if you look down there, 2013 and 2012, those are the lowest collection rates of, those, of the, that list. And the reason is we were billing and collecting motor vehicle taxes at that time, and we spent 80% of our time trying to collect 6% of the levy. But uh, overall, our collection rate is now for the previous nine years is 99.81%. Last year was 99.75, and so we, we keep improving. Debt set off, which is, a, we, we've been a leader in this for a long time. We ranked 19th in the state out of, out of 516 units, and we are 15th among counties. Uh, foreclosures, this is our foreclosure attorney. We've been doing this for uh, 11 years. That's not right, nine years. And uh, we've sent 1,197 properties to foreclosure. Uh, we've closed about 80.7% of those cases. We still have 231 alone. Now this is all jurisdictions. We've collected 11,566,000, and it's probably about 55% of that is county money, probably uh, 6.3 million, somewhere in that area. But it's not, a, it, it does get the moving once we, if we can get them in there and get them collected, we will continue to collect from them. And that's the end of my report, unless you have any questions. You know, the uh, city of Statesville had some uh, questions about uh, how they could approach some of these abandoned properties. Uh, right. And, and all, and um, we were, you know, concerned about being able to collect what's due to us uh, and what was worked out on that. I think they've come up with an ultimate plan. And you could Absolutely. share that with everybody. We have sent 19 to foreclosure for the city this year. And uh, most of with vacant lots. Uh, and the first thing that happened is one guy came in and paid six of them off. Hmm. So uh, 
making some progress. Yeah. Um, I, I will say this. Uh, we had talked several times with staff from the city, and Chairman Mallory, I know you sat in with us for, for a, a couple of discussions, and trying to make sure that we're still accomplishing our mission, vision, and goals. Uh, we're not compromising the work that our tax office is charged with, and we're treating everybody fairly and equitably, but also trying to be sensitive with, with the dynamics and what they're dealing with regarding their revitalization of their community. And <clears throat> what we had actually worked out with is when we go to foreclosure, instead of um, including the taxes on the front end with the initial starting bid, if the city of Statesville does that and they, they bid on it, then when they sell it, they will pay the county taxes. So the taxes are still paid. All we did was work with them. If they're the buyer and they're the, they're the bidder and they turn around and resell it, then they pay the taxes. So it's just a matter of working with them regarding when the taxes are paid. Um, and nine times out of ten, the, the hope is that you know, we want to get the taxes paid when it's bid, but if, they, if the bids are so high and they can't get interested people to come and actually bid on the property, then it still sits there. So the goal was to try to get the bid a little bit lower with a guarantee that the city of states will, will, will pay those taxes. So it really was a win-win working with them on that. They, they are accomplishing what, what they were wanting to do, and we're still collecting the taxes on it. So um, I, I think that's a really good, I think it speaks volumes to the cooperation between the county and the municipality and trying to make sure that, that you know, we have these rules, but we can still work with them to try to accomplish both goals if you can get a little creative. And, and I'm, I'm thankful that we were able to do that. I think that the underlying issue is you have a lot of vacant properties or even derelict properties that, uh, whose title is not in one individual's name, but is in multiple mm -hmm. descendants' names. There's never right. been a clear chain of title. It's just gone to heirs, and over time, uh, no, uh, everyone owns a piece, but no one wants to take responsibility for the whole piece. Mm -hmm. And so no one wants to pay the taxes. If you, if you pay the taxes, then you still have a problem with not being able to actually develop the property because you can't get a mortgage on the property because not all the record owners will sign or can sign because you can't locate them many times. So the tax foreclosure process itself brings some finality to clearing up title so that instead of being a vacant lot, someone can uh, purchase the lot from the city and then uh, build on it and create some taxable base and improve the neighborhood or Individuals in a home can then afford to go or can actually get a mortgage to be able to fix up their property so uh, I appreciate staff working to find a creative way to be able to uh, Facilitate the city of Statesville and trying to achieve their overall objectives while at the same time uh, preserving our uh, uh, tax uh, taxes due and not uh, compromising that and creating a problem or a precedent for other areas of the county. So I think you all worked out. A, you squared the circle after a number of discussions, I think. And everybody's happy, so that's good. I don't know. They're a little impatient, I can tell you that. <laughs> they don't understand. The court system is not... Well, it's not. Quick. No. Very slow. Well, um, as, as always, you know, you, you're a, a bright star that shines in the firmament of, of tax collectors. So um, I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Write that down, I, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, well, thank uh, you. So uh, I don't know when, when you all get together in, uh, as Tax Collectors Association or whatever, but uh, uh, there should be a special award with your name on it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we're not the best, but we, we, we keep mo moving. Once we get past one year, we're still working on other years. So we get better as we go along. 
we, we don't have a staff to, to do what some counties are able to. Well, you do it uh, with a great staff. And please pass on True. our appreciation yeah. for their uh, uh, due diligence and their uh, the friendly way that they work with folks. You know, right. because if people come and say hey, we this is our issues, is there a way to get there? You'll you'll find ways for them to get right. Thank you. And don't don't get mad if we asked you to sign a ten year contract to stay ten more years. <laughs> yeah, you just do do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want the contract. Uh, what that guy uh, Curry got today? Two hundred some million for four years? Cheese and crackers. That's a lot of money. That's more than, that's more than we collected Reformed this money. year. <laughs> okay, well. Oh, oh, I need you to. Uh, any further questions of the settlement? Did you have something else besides? Yes, sir. That? Just to approve the, uh, accept the annual settlement and sign the, work in, uh, sign the orders for me to collect taxes. Okay. Is there consent? Consent. consent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Done and done. Thank you. The next item is the county construction projects update, and that is included in your packet, and uh, everybody was able to look at this and did not hear any questions from the board, so Mr. Salibi is not here to go over the, um, the additions, but if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them if you have any. Any questions? I think once I understood a couple of the abbreviations, I didn't have any questions. Okay, uh, consent to accept? Consent. consent. And then the next item is the task force updates for each respective commissioner. If you have any updates regarding your respective task force that you'd like to update the remainder of the board on, this is the opportunity to do that. Okay, well, we'll take it from the top, economic development. I'm excited to be at Doosong's uh, groundbreak. That was, that was a quite impressive uh, show of equipment, and then the way they're diversifying their line is uh, a lot to look forward to on that. And I believe they also mentioned that it was the largest one in North America on their facility. It was... Yeah, the second sec largest facility second. in the world yes. under, under roof, but the largest... Uh, it was impressive. Power. Yeah, it was impressive on that one, too. So glad we had them in Idle County. Absolutely. Uh, education? Uh, we're still gathering information for future discussions, and we'll bring some proposals to the board at some point. Okay. And uh, public safety? I think we're, that's what we're working on with the new group, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you say we still haven't started. We haven't got, they haven't got back to us yet when they can start? Um, they are. They formed their team. The, uh, the I received back the amended proposal. I think you're talking about the ecom mm, yes. um, proposal. I received back the amended proposal. So with the training that's included in that, so that's ready to go. And they have assembled their team and they're trying to coordinate schedules. So we should be starting in the next, I'd say, week or so. And we have a task force meeting next week. Right. Uh, we're going to be scheduling a task force. We're going to try to schedule on the 16th. Okay. When, when just, just food for thought, are we going to get bombarded there because we haven't gotten any answers of when we're starting? Um, on that one, no. That, that's, a, that's a different topic. <laughs> Good deal. All right. I'll be there then. <laughs> Good. <laughs> thought I was going to be sick that day. but <laughs> You're feeling miraculously better now, aren't you? Okay, public health and well-being. Anything uh, today? Uh, general government. There's not uh, anything specific to report. Um, I will mention uh, that uh, the Iredo County uh, annual exercise for the Naguire Nuclear Station has been going on uh, all day, and uh, that's a. Uh, an exercise that uh, changes from year to year in terms of the scenario that's presented. Uh, and uh, it's a multi-agency process. I don't know how many may have been able to get by and see uh, what they're doing, but uh, they've uh, 
uh, really taking it to another level in terms of uh, the, the facility has given them the ability to uh, uh, be much more efficient in how they uh, plan and the, uh, the, the, uh, the software that they're using mm -hmm. is much easier to keep track of all the conversations and doesn't require everyone to physically be there to mm -hmm. be uh, participating and make sure things are happening. So uh, that whole process uh, validates our uh, evacuation procedures and process uh, in the event that there is an issue. Uh, never, uh, Duke Energy has never gotten beyond a, an alert phase, mm -hmm. and that was back in the 90s. Uh, so they we fortunately never had to uh, execute any of the plans. But as they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've done a really good job of putting that together. Um, okay, the uh, final item for administrative matters is the Board of Elections salary. Um, the There is a request to approve the elections director's salary of $65,000 and then a request to exclude the new position of deputy director of elections from the pay and position classification plan to approve that salary for said position at $55,000 and then to review this classification following the, markets, the market salary study in the fall of 2021. If the board so pleases, the effective date will be July the 29th, 2021, which is the beginning of the pay period. And I would like to recognize the Board of Elections Chairman, Alan Carpenter, who is here. And uh, we are uh, acting on the Board of Elections uh, written request uh, to uh, uh, fill the new director position and a deputy director uh, position and approve their salaries as outlined by the county manager. So is there any other uh, discussion? Uh, any questions? Consent? Consent. Consent. All right, you, you uh, carried the day, Alan. <laughs> Very good. Well, you got a lot on your plate in the next uh, year and a half, so uh, we're glad that, uh, that you're able to uh, have uh, promoted from within and have built the bench over the years, and uh, you'll now be working to fill one position vacancy of an election specialist, right? Okay. okay. Um, there's no announcements of any vacancies uh, this evening on any boards or commissions. Uh, we do have one appointment to the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. Um, Marvin, would you like to make that motion at the appropriate time at 7 o'clock? Please. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone anticipate any unfinished business? Okay, this is not a public comment period. Uh, does anyone anticipate any new business? Uh, preview of the county manager's report? Absolutely. Um, to let everybody know, we do still have some appointment, appointments on uh, boards and commissions that we have announced that we have not received any applicants for. Ms. Anderson has has updated on our website, so it's down there on the on the left hand side. You can click it. You can read about all the different uh, boards that we have, and you can actually click the link to fill out the form as well. But those are the Farm Farmland Preservation Advisory Board, Industrial Facilities and Pollution Control Financing Authority, Jury, Jury Commission, Schools Facility Task Force. We have one appointment on that. Industrial Facilities and Pollution Control. Sorry, that's on there twice. And then Nursing Home Advisory Committee. So I would definitely encourage people to take a look at that, read what on our website what those boards are, what their duties and responsibilities are, and anyone that's interested in volunteering and serving in that capacity and giving back to their community, we certainly encourage them to, to make application for those boards. The other thing is the Iredell County Public Sector Job Fair. We are going to be hosting um, Recruitment and hiring has become very difficult. And I, I 
do not think that Iredell County is alone in our uh, recruitment troubles that we're having. I've talked to a lot of different employers and everybody seems to be having the same problems. So we are actually going to host a public sector job fair. Public sector employees are a little different than private sector. So we thought what we would do is host a job fair, have it at Signal Hill Mall in the parking lot, invite our other public safety, our public sector partners, the schools, Mitchell Community College, things of those nat that nature, and have a public sector job fair. So that is slated to be September the 25th from 9 o'clock in the morning until 3 p.m. And what we're really hoping is to educate, we'll have different booths set up, we'll have various county departments that are looking to recruit for their departments, and we'll have them there for potential applicants to come, find out more about the jobs that we have, and hopefully get people to apply for, for these jobs. So it, you, we're getting creative, and we're doing everything that we can, and we're certainly including our other partners in this effort as well. Thank you, Ms. Mo. Um, okay, we're now prepared to go into a closed session uh, for attorney-client discussions pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143, 318.11, subsection A3. So we're now in a closed session at the South Wing Conference.